and welcome to this tutorial on Python. Today we'll be looking at random walks. Now what is a random walk? Quite simply it is a series of randomly generated numbers in succession. So we're going to go through two different examples today. Example one will generate uh, a randomly set of numbers between 0 and 10 a hundred times and plot that on a graph so you can see what the random distribution looks like. The second example is slightly more complex and will be uh, randomly generating a number between 0 and 1 and we'll be using that to create incremental steps and then plotting that on a graph to see uh, what the results are. So we're going to go through two uh, uh, new functions today if you've be, just been following my uh, tutorials and two, they're going to be rand range and the seed functions. Now these both come from the random toolkit and what they do is quite simply the rand range function chooses a, a number within a specified range and it's very similar to the functions if you did random dot rand int and then x and y. The second one is the seed function, which is a very good way of randomly generating the same set of numbers every time. So this makes it easier to uh, analyze numbers and then you can and to regenerate the numbers if you wanted to do some further analysis later on. So let's go through example one. So if we switch over to the screen now, we first thing we do is we import the seed and rand range functions from the random toolkit and then we import pyplot from map.lib and then we um, we use our seed function to, gen to generate seed one the first seed and then we we uh, plot now we create our different points so we rand range 10 so we choose number between 0 and 10 for i in range 100, so 100 times, so you plot a number between 0 and 10 100 times, and we call that function series, and then we use pyplot to plot that on a graph, and the results should look like this on your bottom right of the screen. As you can see, we've generated a randomly generated number between 0 and 10 100 times. Now we could change that to 1,000. Oh, well done there thousand and rerun it and it gets very busy or we can do that ten times. You see? And because we've used seed uh, we've used seed one, it'll be the same set of numbers every time as you can see. So that is very useful. So that is example one. So if we um, hash these out and then we can now look at example two. So exactly the same first three lines setting up our toolkits. First four lines exactly the same except we're going to create a list now. So we're going to create a list called random walk and we're going to append that list with either minus one or plus one depending on the randomly chosen number. And we're going to loop that randomly chosen number about 10,000 times. So let's actually change that to 1,000. And then we're going to have our movement of minus 1 plus 1 here. So this is very similar to what's up here. And then in order to uh, have like a list of actually what the numbers are, the final results, we want to have our random walk number in the list. Remember the list starts at 0, but our range starts at 1, so our, our random walk list number has to choose from i minus 1, and then we add our movement. Otherwise our list will just be minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1. What we want is actually the result, not the movement. We want the result of the walk. Otherwise our graph will just be minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on a thousand times. So you want to have our value as the random walk plus the movement and then we're going, to, we're going to append the list with those values and then quite simply we plot that again on the graph and you get something like this. As you can see we have plotted the graph here. Now the good thing about using seed 
is that we can change this number and it will happen is this 1000 is part of that 10,000 because we've used the seed function we've just increased the range so if you see if you look on the bottom graph you can see that 0 to halfway across to 2000 looks exactly the same except a bit more squashed than the zero the graph above with 0 to 1000 and we can do this the other way around with 0 to 100 and then 0 to 1000 we can see here that the 0 to 100 here is a portion of this 0 to 1000 so that's very useful and what we can use this we can then now apply this in real world by using this for statistical analyses so probability I and most notably in the Monte Carlo simulation where you, can, you know just from these this, this graph here from between 0 and 1000 we can say that there's a distribution here of 70 and between the 0 and 100 we can say there's a distribution of 20 so that's a very very uh, generic conclusion and one of the points you can get from just what we've done so far um, and you can go further and using uh, functions and expressions and formulae to come up with all sorts of conclusions and these statistical analyses can be also you can are used for you know investments reviews uh, you know people movement uh, you know currency exchange uh, goods movement and so on and so forth and behaviors you know all sorts of things which have a random element to it Another real world application is in gaming development. So you could be, say, a controlling character in a game, and there could be other characters in the game randomly walking around. And you know, this is one of the ways they'll generate uh, that random movement to create sort of a busy atmosphere, or if you're in a town or you know, a generated town or a marketplace, this is one so this is sort of based upon that, you know, they'll be randomly walking around. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Um, subscribe if you like it. And don't forget to watch more because it's only going to get bigger and better. And uh, yeah, I've got more in Python. I've got some Arduino tutorials so you can start building things with sensors. I've also got tutorials on Excel as well. So go and check them out. And uh, thanks for watching for this one. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.